Oh, feels good to be back. Hey there, and uh, welcome to season three of Large Format Friday. Wow, have we ever really been going that long? I, I guess so. Well, anyway, hey there, I'm your host, Matt Mirage. If this is the first time you're stopping by the channel, I'm gonna throw a playlist of our first, uh, first two seasons of LFF. Um, and if you haven't subscribed yet, you know, stick around. I'll give you a good reason to subscribe or you know, just check out the cool stuff we're talking about today. So I had a month off and what did I do in that time? Well, not a lot of shooting, to be honest. Actually, I committed a lot of my spare time to, uh, to home improvement and getting stuff ready. And as you can see right now, I'm not even in my studio. Let me show you why. All right. It's, uh, it's not pretty, folks, but the studio is, uh, oh boy, it's, I don't know how to say it, this, this place is, uh, oh yeah, we're doing some remodeling, so uh, you're not going to be seeing the studio for a few months here while we get things going. I'm going to be working on that and getting it up to uh, what I feel is needed for the channel and also, you know, using as like a photo studio. I, I am a photographer still. I, I like to have those, uh, those conveniences of the studio, you know, backdrops, uh, a little bit more soundproofing so I don't have to deal with all this ambient nonsense. So uh, that's what's going on. Thank you all so much for your support during my time off. Uh, there were some donations, a few print orders to the channel. I really, really appreciate it. If you sent me a message or a comment and you haven't seen a reply to it yet, I actually got a very, very large number of messages over that time, so I'm replying to those as I can. So thank you so much for your continued support. Uh, there's even new subscribers. So uh, for folks that have subscribed and haven't seen a new upload yet, hey, this one's for you. Today, I wanted to talk about something that's kind of unique to large format in that there are some cool multiple exposure options out there. If you don't want to carry around a whole slew of film holders, what do you do? Uh, in 4x5, there's actually quite a few options. You can shoot with roll film adapters, so you can shoot 120 and 4x5 in various different, uh, different aspect ratios. And there's also some multiple exposure units. One of the most popular ones, which I've admired for years and never got a chance to put my hands on one, is this guy. The Graphmatic. So the Graphmatic is a really unique film holder in that it is the six shooter of the large format world. It is a slightly thicker than one film holder, but it allows us to make six exposures within a single unit. The first thing you'll notice about a Graphmatic holder is, well, it's about the same size as a four x five film holder. It's a little bit thicker, uh, but considering this can hold up to six shots, it's quite a bit smaller than three individual holders. But given that's also uh, a metal construction, it's about the same weight as three film holders. So it's saving you a little bit of height, not that much weight, but there's some pretty other nifty conveniences to this film holder. So on the outside of our Graphmatic, we have the side that's gonna face uh, the back of the spring back and the side that's gonna face your lens. We have a dark slide and this little, uh, this little toggle lever here. This lever helps us uh, make adjustments and slide our film and change the order of the septum. It'll make more sense if I just show you what I'm talking about. Let's go ahead and open up the Graphmatic so we can take a look at what's going on, on the inside. I've got my film counter up to one of the numbers here. I've got my dark slide lock in the unlocked position. I'm going to tug on the slide a little bit and then I'm going to pull my lever here and pull the rest out so I can open up and show you my septums. So inside the Graphmatic, there are six thin metal septums, and these are the key to how this system works. You can see I have these dummy sheets labeled one through six, try to keep those in order. The way these go in the holder, this holder has this giant carrier spring, some gears, and a light trap at the bottom there. These go in the Graphmatic, make sure my slide's all the way out, nice. These go in the Graphmatic, emulsion side up with the notch facing the upper right corner. Once those are dropped in like so, push them all the way up, gently push that down, and put my dark slide back in place. If it's not done like that or you force it too quickly, since this is metal and those septums are thin metal, it's very, very easy to damage these septums. It's the number one cause of death in these, uh, these fantastic film holders. 
So just like loading any other 4x5 holder, we have our large format sheet film, emulsion side up. Underneath these little, these little rails here, bring it all the way to the end, and that way it's not going anywhere. Pop this back in. Okay, so those are my septums in place. Now I have these numbered one through six and number one should be on the top. Let's go ahead and set our counter to one. So it's already rolled in there. Now when you roll, when this counter is rolled, it's also tied into this neat little guy right here. And this is a mask for the number one. So when I make an exposure, extra lights coming through here, there's this little, not even a half moon, this little lip that's covering part of the film, so that part will be unexposed, but then it's gonna let a little bit light through and show me the number one. So on my film, right next to the notch code, I'll know which of my septums, or which of my exposures were taken with the Graphmatic. Now, when I go to take my exposure with the Graphmatic loaded and on number one, I can pull my dark slide out, and that's gonna reveal my slide for number one. Once I finish the exposure, while it's still in the camera, put this back, before I completely put it back though, let's look at the other side. When it's, uh, red is dead, you know, red is, it's exposed, it lights hitting it. Once I pop that back in, it's still red, but now I can move this slide. When I move this slide, what's gonna do is gonna pull out the remaining five septums, and this is gonna drop it to the bottom of the stack. So now it has fallen into the holder, and when I push it all the way back in, it's gonna do two things. It's gonna change my frame counter and it's going to change this to black and this one to number two. Let's pop it in. So we've rolled to number two, we're at number two and it's black. And of course the cool thing about this is we can expose well as fast as we need to expose in this. So expose, close, shift, close. Expose, close, shift, close. Expose, close, shift, close. Close, close, shift, close. Close, close, shift, close. And there we go. Six shots, done. And then when you're on X, that's letting you know you're done. Another cool design feature about the Graphmatic is this was designed to work in a variety of 4x5 cameras. Uh, you can see it's got those little retaining clips that most uh, graphic products have. So this little channel here is so the Graphmatic can fit in any camera with a graph lock back. And graph lock backs are about to become more relevant than ever thanks to the, Ro the Lomo Instant uh, graph lock design, instant back. Uh, but this also fits in non-graph lock compatible spring holders. So since this is only a little bit larger than a standard 4x5 film holder, this will actually fit in a variety of spring backs, including the one I have for my Takahara. It is not graph lock, but this will just fit in there and that's why we have this little seating so it can fit in normal spring backs. Pretty cool. Uh, but I've got my 8x10. What are we gonna do about that? So in order to shoot it on the Takahara here, I brought my reducing back. We're gonna pop that on and take this thing for a spin. So I've got here two of my most willing models that I've got, Lauren and Strudel. Come on up, guys. I'm gonna get you right up here and uh, frame you up for a portrait. So exposure today is pretty straightforward. We're just gonna be 60th of a second at F8 using the old Raveni spot. Congrats to Matt and the Raveni team for getting crowdfunded at 1,000% of your goal. Pretty awesome. All right, close this. Great, all right, let's take a shot. Lauren Strude, hold that there. So putting the graph lock or putting the Graphmatic all the way in. It is locking. Okay, let's pull our slide. All the way up. All right, right at the lens. Shoot, shoot, right here, shoot. You wanna cheat? <laughs> he doesn't. All right, yeah, pull him back toward you, right, right there. Ready, one, and, oh, there he is. Cool, place the slide. So what's a little bit different now is 
there's still a piece of film right underneath the slide. So what I need to do to advance to the next frame is I'm gonna need to pull this tab while holding the spring back, pull the whole tab up. That's gonna drop that back. And now I'm at my next, my next frame. All right, lower in street. Street. Right at the lens. Yes, please. Okay. Zil. Zil. What's over here? Zil, you want nanners? So how did, you know, how do I like it and who is this for? Well, I'm not that much of a, like a power 4x5 shooter. I barely shoot 4x5 at all, but I felt like it was pretty cool. I think this is for someone that wants to really minimize the amount of stuff. So not really minimizing weight, but just minimizing how many moving parts are sitting around in their camera bag. If you're using something like a rangefinder style, Graflex or Linhoff or Horseman camera, I think the Graphmatic makes a whole ton of sense. If you're someone that just focuses normal ground glass style, it's just a stylistic choice. Um, I think if you have a really, really clean workflow as far as a place where you can load and unload safely, and you have some nice straight metal septums for these, you could also minimize dust pretty well. Another popular use of alternative film holders is less exposed surface area where you can have dust and debris get into the holder. Now downsides. These haven't been manufactured new uh, for about twice the amount of time that I've been alive. So they've not been, they've not been made new in a while. So parts just like anything Graflex are super hard to come by. This means that we're kind of chasing and fighting for the remaining scraps that are out there. That puts these holders uh, somewhere around 100 USD on auction sites and like Facebook Marketplace. So consider that too. 4x5 film holders can be had for between 5 and 15 bucks, depending on the, the age and quality of them, whereas these are more than the price of six film holders. This is definitely a personal choice. I want to shoot like this, where I'm shooting really, really in, in quick succession and need to load to that next shot. Now, I don't know anybody that shoots that rapidly with 4x5. Probably the closest would be my buddy Tariq, so I, I'm going to see what he thinks about these in the studio, but it's a nice alternative. If you have any questions about the Graflex Graphmatic, uh, you can always feel free to drop those down below in the comments. Or for those long form questions, you can always shoot me an email, largeformatquestions at gmail.com. Thanks again for stopping by, and we'll catch you next week for more LFF.